guys, I'm Nicole and welcome to my first video. Um, this is something I've actually been wanting to do for a really long time now and I've only just now plucked up the courage to do it. To put yourself out there on YouTube and have goodness knows how many people watch your videos is a little bit daunting. So, um, I thought about it for ages and watched everyone else's videos and I thought it was about time that I got on board. So I thought I would start off just by telling you guys a little bit about my story. Um, it's not quite a short and sweet story. It's a bit of a, I thought I'd start off with just a little bit of history about myself. Um, my name's Nicole, obviously. I'm 25 years old and I'm from Brisbane, Australia. I am married to Ryan, who um, was my high school sweetheart. We've been together for eight and a half years. Um, and finally tied the knot last year in September, which was really exciting for us. Um, during the eight and a half years that we've been together, we both went to uni, finished uni, and decided to do some travelling. So Ryan actually finished university half a year before me, so he had always had a dream to go overseas and work and travel. So he did that in the start of 2010. He left... Um, in February went to do that while I finished up the rest of my university and then when I finished uni um, in July I went over there to um, keep traveling with him and we did that until the end of 2010 until we pretty much ran out of money and had to come home um, then we came home and both got jobs and, and started the normal adult things that you do got engaged got married um, after we got married, we decided that we really wanted to have a baby, as um, quite a few married couples do. Prior to um, getting married, we sort of weren't really preventing pregnancies as such, but weren't actively trying and sort of, we've always wanted children and just thought it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. But after the wedding, we thought, yep, yeah, let's, let's go, let's have a baby, pretty much. Um, during that time, I really started to have difficulties with my cycle. So pretty much every month, um, over like a year, year or two, probably actually when I think back, um, I just started to have these symptoms, which I'd never really had before each month. I'd just get that little bit worse, a little bit worse. Um, and I sort of just put it down to, you know, it's, it's probably normal. I didn't really know any better. Um, each month I wasn't getting pregnant and, you know, I wasn't really too worried. Um, when I look back, I probably should have been like, oh, what's happening? But I was just oblivious. I just thought, oh, you know, like I'm just getting bad periods. It's, it's fine. Um, so after probably about six months of trying, I thought, hmm, I don't know, like these symptoms are getting worse and worse. So, you know, each cycle I would probably have to take at least a day or two off work because I'd be in lots of pain, I'd be on the floor um, in pain. I would have to be taking pain relief every single um, cycle and that's just not me. I'm not the type of person that likes to take pain relief um, to even take a paracetamol for a headache it has to be really bad like I, I'm just not that type of person that um, likes taking pain relief if I can avoid it so I went along to my GP and got a referral for a gynecologist that I had seen probably a year or two before that just for some really minor issues um, so my GP referred me to her and um, I went to an appointment there and she decided that it was time that we did a laparoscopy to have a look inside and just see what was happening, seeing if um, there was any cause for my pain. So some of the symptoms that I was having is I would have terrible cramping. Sometimes it would get so bad that it would make me really nauseous. I'd get really um, sweaty and clammy, feel like I'm going to be throwing up. Um, I would have difficulties with my bowels sometimes, just painful um, when opening my bowels or going to the toilet, um, things like that. I would, I was tired a lot. Um, 
I had always had this pain on my left side, like sharp shooting pains that I would get with ovulation, um, and then just sporadically every now and then I just get sharp shooting pains, um, which just got progressively worse each cycle. So she thought, um, yep, yeah, it's time to have a look inside, and she threw around um, the term endometriosis. Now, I sort of do have a bit of a better medical background, so I do know what endometriosis is and never would have thought I had it. Um, I, When I first started my periods at 14, my cycles were regular every 28 days, pretty much down to the hour, and they weren't painful at all. I would cruise through them. They weren't a big deal. Um... Then when I was in my teen years and started dating Ryan, I started um, on the pill as most young women do. I was on that for a couple of years and then just really didn't want to be on a hormonal contraceptive for a really prolonged period period of time because I just wasn't sure about the long-term implications of that. So I came off it and we were just using um, condoms and sort of... um, yeah, trying, not prevent, not preventing, not trying type thing. So the the thought that I had endometriosis never really crossed my mind, to be honest. And, you know, once you sat down and went through the symptoms with me and stuff, I, it kind of, it made sense, but I don't know why, it just didn't click for me. Um, so I had my laparoscopy in July of this year, and she'd always said, like, I'll go in, I'll have a look and see if it if you do have endometriosis and it's quite minor, then I can take care of it then and there. If it's extensive, then I'll I'll just be taking pictures and um, we'll come up with a game plan from there. So I went into it knowing, you know, it could be math, it could be a case of them just looking and going, you know, you need more surgery, or they could go in and go, yep, there's endometriosis there, let's get rid of it. So I woke up. After my um, laparoscopy and my gynecologist said, yeah, you definitely have endometriosis and you also have quite a large ovarian cyst on your left side, which explains all of the pain that I was getting on that side. Like all of my pain was always on that side. So for me, that just was like, yeah, that, that's what's caused that pain. Um, the cyst itself was about five centimetres and was attached to small bowel and my fallopian tube it was sort of she described it as just being like tangled and it was actually pulling my whole uterus off to the left side so um she's like yeah you're definitely going to need more surgery and i'm going to refer you to another doctor who specializes in endometriosis so i felt like yes i finally got an answer um she also did lots of blood tests um, include like all the fertility ones, check all my hormones, check my um, egg count, everything like that, and that was all normal, which was good. The only thing was I had low vitamin D, which didn't really surprise me because I work inside all day and it was winter and I wasn't getting a whole lot of sun. So that was the only thing that came back abnormal. At the time, she also did a sperm analysis for Ryan just to check um, what his sperm count was and that sort of thing. That came back. Um, that he actually had low count and low motility. So we sort of had a brief discussion with her to figure out what is going to be the best um, course of action from here. And obviously she said, you need to get that cyst taken care of. Um, You need that um, operation. And in the meantime, we just tried to do some uh, lifestyle changes for Ryan to see if um, that would boost his um, count. So he signed up for the gym that I was already going to and um, just tried to make a conscious effort to eat a bit healthier. We, we live a fairly healthy lifestyle, but just to try to make it a little bit of extra effort and to try and cut down on alcohol um, intake, which proved to be a little bit easier said than done for him because um, he does like a nice cold beer, especially now that it's summer. Um, so I got a referral sent to this new doctor and um, I expected it to be quite a lengthy process because 
we decided to go through the public system purely because if I did go privately, even with my private health insurance, it was going to cost us thousands of dollars. And we just weren't in a position to be forking out thousands of dollars for an operation and then perhaps, you know, after the operation, finding out that we'd have to do IVF and stuff anyway, which is really expensive in itself. So we thought we'd go the public route and hopefully it's not going to take too long. Um, that process, all in all, was fairly quick. I was really impressed. I probably a couple of months later I had an appointment. I went to one appointment. He was like, "Yeah, you need the surgery." He did my consent form. Um, they booked the surgery that day um, for in a month's time. I went and saw the pharmacist. I had blood done. I had everything done in one appointment, um, and I barely had to wait around at the hospital. It was fantastic. Um, so I just recently had my second laparoscopy, which was now two weeks ago. Um, I went in and they sort of, because he didn't do the original operation, he only had my other doctor's notes to go by. So he didn't know exactly the extent um, to which everything was tangled up and that sort of stuff. So um, originally they were like, we'll just, do two incisions, so one in my belly button and one on my left um, hip, where I had had my previous laparoscopy, so they would just go through the same scar. Um, the operation itself, he didn't really know how long it was going to take, but I went. I ended up going in at about 10.30. I remember looking at the clock um, as they were wheeling me in, and I woke up in recovery at about three, 2 or 3 o'clock, so it was a couple of hours. They ended up having to do four incisions. So I've got one in my belly button, one on my left and right hip, and then one just in the middle of my abdomen. Um, they're all quite low down on my bikini line, so um, I'm not really worried about them being horrible scars or anything like that. They're actually feeling really well, so I'm really happy with that. They were able to get pretty much all of the cyst out and able to untangle everything. All the endometriosis was pretty much on the left side. There was a tiny bit on the right side that they got rid of, but predominantly everything was on the left, which explains, again, why pretty much all of my pain was always on that left side. Um, at the same time, they did some dye studies just to make sure that my tubes were patent. So they flushed some um, dye through them. The right side, it flowed really quickly, really freely. On the left side, it was a little bit slower, but it did... It did um, go all the way through, but that tube was slightly um, swollen and slightly damaged just from having been all tangled and everything, but it looks like it's able to function. Um, the doctor said I just have to be really careful if I do have any symptoms of an ectopic pregnancy to get checked out straight away um, just because that left side is slightly damaged. Um, so that was all... Really good news. I was really happy that you know everything was taken care of. The recovery in itself has been not as bad as I was expecting, to be honest. The first week was pretty bad, and then the second week I really found that things started to heal and I started to be able to move around a lot more freely. I'd gotten rid of all that gas that they fill your tummy with when they do a laparoscopy, so I was starting to feel a lot more comfortable. And then I did get an infection in my belly button, which um, just made it really quite a lot tender. Um, but I got on top of it, went to my GP, got some antibiotics. So it's starting to clear up now and it's starting to feel a lot better. Um, I've had three weeks off work. Well, I'm on to my third week off of work. So I'll be going back to work next week. And I really feel that I'm definitely ready to go back to work. I'm, you know, I'm moving around. I'm you know, I'm able to bend and stuff like that. Everything is still slightly tender, but I'm pretty much able to do most things. I went to the gym last week um, and spoke with my trainer and sort of just had um, a quick session to see what sort of things I'd be able to do, and I was able to do most of it. Um, I'm not lifting any weights yet, though. I'm just doing, um, like, squats and stuff like that without, without weights, um, just slowly easing my way back into it. Um, so yeah, so after the surgery, I felt really positive that, you know, this, that we'd be able to just get on now and, um, hopefully fall pregnant quickly because after a laparoscopy, they do 
um, say that you're you're most likely to get pregnant within the first six months, and it, and if you can get pregnant in that time, it's it's good because it'll stop all that endometriosis going back. So that was definitely our plan. We decided to do another sperm analysis to check on Ryan's sperm count um, since he had implemented um, lots of lifestyle changes and that sort of thing. So we had that done probably a week and a half ago, probably a week after my surgery maybe. And we got the results back from that and unfortunately they weren't fantastic. So he, on top of having low count and low motility, um, he also has a hundred percent of his sperm that don't have normal morphology so all of them have some sort of head defect um quite a few of them have tail defects and that sort of thing so that is definitely came as a sh as a shock i would have hoped that there would have been a few normal ones in there but um it what it means now is that we're definitely having to look at the ivf route so we've got appointments booked for um, in about three three weeks time to go see an IVF specialist um, to discuss our options. The first appointment is just going to be with a nurse just so that we can get all of our information together, give her all of our blood tests, all of um, like my surgery notes um, and everything like that so that they can get that all ready so that when we see the doctor, um, the doctor's got everything in front of them so they, that they can be like, okay, this is what you guys need to do. This is what I would recommend. Um, from the little bit of research that I've done, I it would be very, very difficult for us to get pregnant on our own purely because the if the head of the sperm is not normal, it's, it's pretty much impossible for it to... Um, penetrate the egg and to get into the egg. So um, we're definitely looking down the route of IVF, but until we have our first appointment, we're not really going to know the full extent, like what are our chances, like are we able to use these sperm that aren't normal, or if we use these sperm, does that mean that um, the DNA in the sperm is not normal? So those are the sort of things that we need to find out. Um, you know, do we need a sperm donor is... Like, is that an option or is there anything that we can do, any medications or anything like that that we can use to try and um, make some better sperm, basically. So there is, that's where we're at at the moment. Um, I'm envisioning having updates quite regularly, probably um, every Tuesday and Thursday, just to let you all know where we're at with that. Probably for the next little while, there won't be anything too exciting happening until we do get the IVF for rolling, um, which I'm anticipating will probably be in a new year, so that's really exciting. Um, but until then, I'll just keep you updated on what's happening. I've got a few ideas of some videos that I thought um, you guys might find interesting. So I'm sorry that this video is quite lengthy. Um, I didn't quite anticipate it would be that long, but yeah, like I said, my story isn't one that's nice and short and sweet. Um, it's still in process. So yeah, I'll just keep you guys all updated. Um, and I'm not sure how many of you are actually going to watch this. It'll probably just be me and maybe my sister. Um, but if you have watched this and you like it, click the like button. Let me know that someone's actually watched it. And um, click subscribe as well if you want to see my future videos. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya.